What's the new like intro? Like what instead of the hey guys or that's hello? It. That's the YouTube intro. It is kind of how. So we gotta go with the YouTube intro. You don't have to, but you can. It helps. The Forester's away now for the winter. Still got a couple projects left to do on it, but the cross check is gonna take the spotlight again and starting off with some new lights. So we're gonna put some more love into the cross track, making this the ultimate daily driver. So the awesome people of Dino Dynamics sent over some of their SSC2 LED pods, as well as a couple other goodies that you guys will see later on. Um, but we're gonna be installing these as ditch lights. Bah! <laughs> they all just fall out. If you guys own a cross track, are on any cross track forms, or a Tacoma, or any overland forms, you probably have seen the Dive Dynamic SSC2 light pods. Do you think the Mars rover has one of those? They probably have a couple of them. It's dark out there in space, I it think. Is, that's what I was thinking. Light safe, yeah. Hmm. You can get different beam patterns when you order these. High beam driving, a fog wide, which are both SA approved, or a flood, spot, or a combo. I personally went with a combo because they're gonna be ditch lights instead of front lights or rear lights. The side mounted lights are gonna give you the best of both worlds of being a flood light as well as being able to see down the road. So when you get a set of these light pots from Dynamics, you get a nice box and you get two lights. So once you take these lights out, which I already took the one out, so we'll take this one out of the path plastic as well. You also get two individual baggies, which are gonna have your pigtails as well as a mounting bracket. So in the box, you're gonna get your two lights, some mounting hardware, and some electrical connectors. Now, if you're gonna wire these into a pre-existing system or your own switch, then you have your pigtails. I, however, opted to go with the heavy duty wiring harness, which comes with, geez, that's a nice harness. It already comes with your pigtails already connected. So you can plug them directly into your lights without having to splice anything in. Um, it's a three position switch. These little guys also have what's called a backlight. The backlight is simply a little small light in the back that just illuminates. So when you're going down the road, you don't need to have them on on full brightness to see them. You can have them just illuminated, kind of like your park lights or your driving lights on your car. Now, as far as mounting these on the car, I opted to go with these SMK side mount brackets because I wanted to put them in front of the side view mirrors facing downwards. So as far as assembling the bracket to the light itself, you're gonna need a 3 8 wrench and a Allen key. Great job. <laughs> Thanks, man. So next we're gonna pop the hood. Uh, we're gonna need this for installing the side mount brackets as well as running wires. So go ahead and pop your hood. Ooh, it's warm in here. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next one. So next step, you're gonna open your door and you're removing this plastic piece. It's just held in by a couple pop snaps. So you just unpop snap it off and it's off. Now, save these, don't throw them out because if you ever put your car back to stock, you do need these. Next, we're gonna unbolt the fender slightly. This bolt here has to be removed, as well as this bolt here. And this bolt, we're just gonna remove and set to the side as we are gonna reuse it. So go ahead, take a 10 mil if you haven't lost it already, and go ahead, remove them. It's a good idea to use a hand tool versus a impact gun or anything like that, especially for these, because God forbid your car has a little rust or anything on it and it sees, you can easily just twist whatever mounting ear is there and do more damage than good. Whereas a ratchet, you can sometimes kind of feel it and then break it free. So use a, use a hand tool for this. Right. This is the passenger side. The long screw goes on the top, the short screw goes on the bottom. Flip it over, the long screw gets the spacer. What you're gonna do, you need to sneak this behind the fender. So take some tape, put it in here like so, and then you're gonna wedge the nut in. So then that way it's almost captive and it can't fall out. Then you're gonna reach this up behind the fender, then you're gonna reach this inside the fender and you're gonna install the bolt. Now to install these, you're gonna need the same Allen key as that you use to install the bracket to the lights. The purpose of the tiny wash that you saw, as well as that spacer, it keeps it elevated off the body. So at no point is this entire bracket on the body rubbing, chafing, removing paint. It's actually spaced off and you need to take a piece of paper when you're done 
and run it along the whole side and make sure it's not contacting, contacting the body. Like I said, I got the heavy duty wiring harness and this harness is definitely heavy duty. <laughs> duty, this is a nice harness. So as far as installing the harness, what I'm gonna do on the passenger side, pull these little fender caps off. So first it's two little pop snaps. Snap, pop, crackle, pop, snap, pop, okay. And then you can pull this panel off. Then you can start running this wire through and it's gonna come out the other side. So next we're gonna in temporarily install the light just so you can kinda see how much wire you need. Exposed, exposing. Mm -hmm. So now that we have the lights mounted temporarily, the harness where we roughly want it, you can go ahead and sneak in that little cutout that they put for the wires to sneak through. And now we're gonna install the screw and the spacer again. So now we're gonna install the fender bolt on the top side because you don't wanna over tighten anything yet until all the bolts are in. Uh, and you're gonna use the wear marks, witness marks they call them, to get the fender back where it was. So now that this bolt is back in and lined up, now you can go ahead and tighten these two bolts completely now. So now that you have your pigtail right here, you can permanently mount the light now. So you're gonna take one of the carriage bolts, put that through. Keep in mind, all this is stainless steel hardware. So you just gotta be careful when you tighten everything that you don't over tighten everything because if you gall stainless, it'll bite into itself. It's next to impossible to remove without cutting it off. And at that point, it's gonna cause a lot more damage. Pull your light in. Your registration is almost up. This stuff just kind of uh, tucks in next to the oil. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done! <laughs> as far as running wires, you can do it a whole bunch of different routes, different ways, different styles, whatever you so choose. Uh, this is how I'm gonna do it, so you guys can follow along roughly in the video and then kind of fine tune from there. Um, but now we're gonna tuck the wire harness a little bit and then find a way of getting the switch into the cabin and then we're gonna go for a drive. And Chris is gonna do his cinematic old beautiful stuff that he does. Your black will go to your negative side here. We'll tighten this side up. And then your positive will go over here. As far as running the control wire for the switch into the cab, right down here next to the brake booster is a pass through for the rest of the engine harness. So if you just make a slight incision on the inside, you can send a coat hanger through, wrap up your wires, pull them through, and then you can make your connection. And again, because they made it so you can disconnect the switch from the rest of the harness, you only have to worry about fishing that small connector through versus the entire switch. So good thinking diode. 
Like I said, there's multiple ways of running the wiring. Uh, that's just how I did it. I kind of stuck everything away, hid them under these covers, utilized these, utilized some factory uh, mounting brackets to kind of sneak the wires underneath and keep them self-contained. Uh, so yeah, whenever you run wires, you always want to keep them away from heat sources or any pinch points because it is electrical wires and you know, you don't want to pinch them. Everything's ran nicely. Now we can actually shut the hood because we are done under here. God dang, they look good. Light death, light death. As you guys can tell, this is not the full output. This is the backlight I was talking about. So while it's going down the road, you don't need the full brightness, you can just have the backlights on. So then that way at least it adds a little style hues to your vehicle and it looks cool. But then when you need them, you just flip the switch and then they're full brightness. So this is the full brightness, uh, clearly not the backlight, this is with the actual LED pod on. And you guys can't really tell, but these things are bright as all hell. So we're gonna go take this out now. It's during the day, so we're gonna you know, work with what we have. And then tonight I'm gonna grab some clips of them uh, illuminating everything. But right off the bat, these things are really, really bright. As you guys can tell, they're pretty damn bright. You can see the spot and the blood working okay. great, okay. huh? Talk about how bright they are, but like be blinded by it. I can't see anything because these things are so damn bright. <laughs> I want to give a massive thank you to Diode Dynamics for staying over the SSC2 pods. They performed great so far. We're going to go back out tonight and see how they do at night. Make sure you guys check out their website. I'll put it in the description so you guys can get your own light pods. You can see what they offer for your vehicle or anything else that you guys can come up with for use of their light pods. Make sure you guys comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.